Hello everyone, and welcome to the Urquan Masters HD Hardcore Playthrough. No Starbase, there it is in the background there. We're never visiting that thing, because we, um, if you don't already know uh, from the intro video, um, are playing Urquan Masters. Um, I've already done a whole Urquan Masters playthrough in which I'm pretty much doing a blind playthrough. This one, I, I pretty much know most of the game now, and I'm doing the uh, No Starbase Challenge, so it's, I'm going to call it Urquan Masters Hardcore. Um, just because it's a good thing to call it. Uh, so basically, uh, we're going to just go straight into the game. I think um, we're just going to we're just going to press new game, and we're going to create a uh, we're going to we're going to going to write down our name. So obviously it's Tom. So there we go. There's the uh, captain's name and uh, flagship name. Well, we had the Nova Mace last time. Um, so another ship from Treasure Planet Battle at Procyon is of course the um, Ice Fist. Not of course, but that's what it is. It sounds pretty cool. Another Proshan ship. You won't have any clue about that, but I'm going to call it that because it sounds nice. Okay, so we're going to just save the game straight away just so we have a save file for it. And I am going to call it Hardcore LP. Uh, that's what I'm going to type down here, Hardcore LP. There we go, and it's saved in the files. So, um, first thing, obviously, is to go over to Fwifo. That is obviously the first thing to do um, because Fwifo is a pretty crucial part of this because... We're not going to be able to build any new ships. We're not going to be able to upgrade ours or give it any weapons or anything. Well, actually, that's not true. We are going to be able to, uh, able to upgrade our um, our landers and stuff like that from the Melnorme, but not actually build any more modules on our ship. So we're going to be pretty, going pretty slow and things like that. Now, we're about to talk to Fwifo. Um, it's the first uh, n uh, talk with, a, with another species. Um, I had a straw poll for if you wanted to hear these um, these these talking with uh, other things. There's actually going to be a button at the top, so if you don't want to hear Twifo about, uh, don't want to hear me talking to Twifo, <laughs> you can press that. Otherwise, you can, you can listen to what Twifo has to say again. Mayday from surface. We have come under fire from an alien vessel we found hiding on the surface of Pluto. Captain, they killed Kowalski, F Fate, Fates, Chin, O'Donnell, Luigi, and all three of the Lieberman triplets. We have returned fire, but our stunner can't penetrate the ship's hull armor. We are initiating emergency launch procedures. Oh my god, here we go. Captain Fwifo. Here he is. In all his glory. Attention, a big, mean, hostile alien vessel hovering overhead in an obvious attack posture. This is Spotty Captain Fwifo. I know you are going to torture me, so let's just get this over with right now. The coordinates of my home world, Spatewa, are 241.6 by 368.7, and the ultra secret Spatty Cipher, which is known only by me and several billion other Spatty, is Happy Muffy Duffy. Sorry about that little mistake with your landing vehicle. I was uh, so startled when it approached my vessel in a threatening manner that uh, my automated defense system fired on it when it got too close. I hope nobody got hurt. Are you sure? Because your statement is often just a more polite way of saying, Attention alien vessel, identify yourself or be destroyed. In any event, I am Spotty Captain Fwifo of the Void Ship Star Runner. Based here in this planetary system as part of the powerful Earth Tower, the Star Force, which our master, the Earth One, established here to make sure the Earthlings don't do anything tricky. About 20 years ago, this region of space was dominated by a loose confederation known as the Alliance of Three Stars, which was composed of the aliens native to these parts who did not want to be enslaved. They made a valiant effort against the superior Urquan forces. It even looked like they might miraculously defeat the combined Urquan armada, right up to the point at which the Urquan totally defeated, indeed annihilated them. When the Urquan armada entered the system to subjugate formerly the Earthlings, the Urquan presented the humans with the standard slave options. Join the hierarchy as combat thrones and retain some autonomy including the right to travel through space, or become a fellow species and return to free atomic savagery on the surface of their homeworld in taste for all time.
time beneath an impenetrable force shield. The humans chose the latter option, and so were swiftly imprisoned on the surface of Earth. But the Earth one didn't trust them to obey the restrictions, so they chose a small group of hierarchy combat starships from the Inlet and Spartan fleets to create the so-called Earth Guard and station them at a base on Earth's moon. Originally, we were stationed on Earth's moon, which made us study a bit uneasy, because with each passing day, we grew more and more worried about the sneaky Earthlings making a surprise attack. So the Inuit kept telling us that it was impossible, since the Earthlings had no ships or weapons whatsoever. That made us feel a bit better, but when the Inuit left, again we grew fearful, and decided to make a strategic redeployment to Mars. Later on, we decided it would be prudent to relocate to Jupiter's moon, Ganymede, then later Saturn's moon, Titan, and finally here to Pluto. The Ilrath contingent were supposed to be the toughest ridge crest, er, uh, the most rigid flipper, no, ah uh, yes, the backbone of the Earth Guard Force. But they departed the system on the mass not long after the last Earth Hundred that vanished from this region of space. They claimed to have received a direct order from their gods of evil and darkness, who had grown dissatisfied with the Inrath's passivity and wanted them to kill, or at least, torture someone soon. Personally, I believe they just got bored and went off to have some fun. Well, when they were pushing up into hyperspace 18 years ago, we asked them that very question, and I think they said something to the effect of real soon. We decided that if the Earthlings figured out we had abandoned the base on Luna, they would be more likely to try something sneaky. So, we rigged up some old service androids and ordered them to drive around on the lunar surface in bulldozers, endlessly pushing around the same piles of dirt. In addition, we connected the base's local radio transmitter to an audio Melnorme fun rum called Winky's Happy Night hoping they would think we were still there. Over the past years, it became necessary to redeploy strategically some of our earth guard forces to our homeworld in case of a sudden surprise attack by a vicious unrelenting alien race which we spotty call THE ULTIMATE EVIL! As yet, the ultimate evil remains largely unmanifest, and its powers and exact intentions are still a bit obscure, since it lurks just outside the range of even the most sensitive long-range detectors, which we feel gives conclusive evidence as to the ultimate evil's nefarious intent. Thousands, that is to say, scores, and perhaps even hundreds of my brethren stride through the corridors of this specially modified, super-efficient, mass destruction-oriented starship, which could lay seeds to an entire planetary system, should we choose to do so, which, fortunately for you, we have decided not to do today. I am undone! You are far too clever for a poor stuffy like me, and now I must submit to your superior alien intellect. I guess I am not revealing any truly important secrets if I tell you that each of my species in lunar class void ships typically holds 30 stuffy crewmen, so at present my vessel, the Star Runner, is not up to full complement due to the needs of my homeworld in their resistance against the ultimate evil. And, in fact, my vessel is somewhat understaffed right now, seeing as how I am the only spotter on board, which is a bit threatening, as I am sure you can understand. Since it was our most powerful and unforgiving master, the Orphan, who stationed us here, we knew it would be grossly stupid to disobey them completely, but 
we decided it would be okay to send just one ship home. We used one of our most ancient and solemn rituals, Poon Taffy, to pick the lucky ship. Then, some months later, we decided that it wouldn't really hurt if we sent one more ship home. And then later we sent another, and then another. Well, you get the idea. Alas, as fate would have it, when the final ritual was performed, I, the Riffle, was left here alone. For as even the most immature in wrestling knows, there must always be one stopper who puts the short top on the stick. Our masters don't really keep us very well informed about their goings on. So that all we know is that immediately after the subjugation of the last alliance race, the Yehat, I think, the Archon doubted their dreadnoughts and departed from the edge of the galaxy, commanding us to obey the slave laws or face their wrath when they returned. How true, Captain, how true! In truth, just between us, during the past seven years, I have been quite ill at ease, and yet now I find myself enjoying your company. This witty dialogue, and in the presence of your huge, powerful, death-dealing starship, which, being my friend, you would certainly feel compelled to use in order to save me from any hostile lifeforms who threatened me with death. Happy days and jubilation! I discard all prejudice and hesitation and accept and celebrate your offer of protection and your undying commitment to my well-being. I must wax melancholy for just a moment though. And make sure you understand that any other spotty ships we meet at large in the galaxy are not going to be quite so responsive to your friendly gestures as myself. Since they bear more heavily the yoke of Aquan enslavement and are also apt to talk themselves out of a line with a totally unknown alien, which I, having been left here alone, cannot do. Welcome me aboard, Captain. Okay, so there we are. Um, we have now got the Spathia Luda with Captain Fwifo in it. Um, we lost some crew, obviously, to actually get him, but it's so important that we get this Spathia Luda because there's actually something in the game, um, and I don't think it's a bug. I think it's actually intentional, just so you don't do this challenge, like just so people don't go into hyperspace straight away. Um, probes normally spawn, I think, at a rate of about 8% per day in hyperspace, but if you haven't been to the Starbase and you go into hyperspace, then there's a 100% chance, I think, as long as there's not one already going for you. So you basically don't want to... Um, you want to be careful. You want to be as quick as you can, head straight where you want, uh, and, and be as careful as you can about that. So I'm not going to go to Alpha Centauri, um, because I, it just costs so much fuel to go there, really. Um, I've worked... I Just before recording this episode, and the reason it's taken a little while to get out is because I've had to sort of work out where the best place to go is. Um, there's not really much about this challenge, so I have to go sort of into it without much data. Um, I'm pretty sure that the best place to go... I've got a table with the biofuel units on it, with all the best planets for biofuel, and it seems that the Alpha Wolf system has a has a moon, um, I think moon 4A, which has uh, a lot of biodata. And look how slow I'm moving, and I think instantly a probe has, has seen us and is going straight for us. Um, so that's brilliant. So we're not even going to make it before a probe hits. Now, luckily... Um, it's, it's arguably cheaty, but basically what you can do... Okay, I didn't do it there. Um, but in a way, it's 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 more... It's it's a good way of, uh, of getting away from the probes. Basically what you do is you load the game, and the probes sort of like... I think what it is, they lose their momentum, they lose their sort of inertia, so they have to start sort of um, moving again. Uh, yeah, as you can see, they sort of lose a bit of... <laughs> they lose their inertia, and they can't catch up with you if you keep reloading all the time. So if I just keep loading up the game all the time. They keep sort of flying back a bit uh, relative to me. Um, so that is one way of actually getting past the pros, but unfortunately we do have to attack at least one to at least know about the Slylandro probes and their problems so we can talk to Fwifo. Uh, not Fwifo, so we can talk to the Slylandro leaders. So 
I guess we might as well get that over and done with. And uh, first of all, obviously I want to put a lot of more crew into Fwifo's ship, because at the moment he's only got one. Um, so we need to fill that up to 30. Um, so less chance that we will die, uh, or at least Fwifo will die. So uh, I, I fought a lot of probes in the past with Fwifo in the original uh, Let's Play, so hopefully this should go okay. Okay, here we are against a Slander probe in deep space. Save the game and uh, converse. We come in peace. Remote probe program to replicate. Repair data. Contact alien species priority override. New behavior dictated. Must break target into component materials. So there we go, um, inevitably hostile um, from uh, 2418B, uh, but here we are, we're in battle. Uh, Frifo versus the Slandro probe, what is going to happen? I, I wonder. So so I just need to get close to them. I think there is a strategy with these guys, which um, I'm sort of failing to do right now, but because I just want to get some early hits. Uh, but there's actually a way to sort of... Um, the way that our AI seems to work against Fofo anyway is like if you turn around like early, they turn around as well to um, cross, sort of meet you in the middle again uh, when the screens change. But there is actually a way, um, which I probably do in a minute because it's not being, I'm not being very lucky with this. You need to sort of time the turn perfectly when you're doing it this way, which I'm always going too early. But if you start to chase them like that, they try to catch you up because they're that little bit quicker. So they will start, as you can see, to try and chase me, getting ever closer. And I might get a few hits. There we go. I need one more hit. They are sort of dodging me quite a lot, though. Um, so let's see if we can get this last hit on. At some point, he will turn. There we go. Um, so let's see if we can do that again. Let's time the turn perfectly. Luckily, for, for oh, there we go. We got him. There we are. We only lost two crew. That is awesome. That is a really good start. And we don't ever have to face another Slylandra probe again. Our use do not matter in this, by the way, um, because we can't spend any of them at the Starbase. So, here we go. Alpha Wolf. We are there. We have we have made our destination. And um, I think that will be a good time to finish the first episode. We've made our first journey through hyperspace. We've got Fwifo on our side now. We've destroyed the Sly Slylandro probe that we needed to do so we could um, tell the Slylandro, the people of people of source that there's a problem um, next episode or at least in the in the following episodes we need to um, get over to quasi space um, so that we can get uh, over to beta corvi quicker because obviously we can take a bit of a shortcut because uh, there's a quasi opening at vega whatever it's called i think near beta corvi so that would be a quicker way to get there instead of having to just travel through hyperspace um, obviously next episode though we need to collect some bio data Meet the male normally when you run out of fuel, which is what we're going to have to do, and see where it goes from there. Goodbye.